Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cincinnati Man. I am here to talk to you today about my reaction to The Maestro. I understand that it was uh, Bradley Cooper's uh, dream project that he's been working on for years. And uh, let me be honest with you. The reason why I, I decided to watch this is because I've seen memes after uh, Killian Murphy won for Oppenheimer. And there was a bunch of memes up, like joking about how he had shaded, he was shaded or dissed by Bradley Cooper lightly, talking about uh, you know, it didn't take it didn't take so many people years to do a project like mine and everything. And I was laughing at the memes, you know. Hey, competition, it is what it is. Um, the Maestro, it looks interesting, but it's missing. It maybe on purpose is missing his heart. Because throughout the whole film, Leonard Bernstein's character is one of, I'm a people person, but I'm distant. You ever met somebody that they were all about the party, but when you really thought about it, they had nothing else to say. At times, it's all about, or it's all about the work. Like it, it and the distance is felt in the film. In Oppenheimer, he was going crazy because of the work. But this, this is the weird thing about the Leonard Bernstein biopic. I know nothing about orchestras. I know nothing about Broadway. I'm not well-versed in knowing the history of the people that put the music behind plays or orchestras or television, per se, when it comes to the orchestras. If you're like me, you're not going to know you're not going to know oh that was his famous song here that was his famous song there the only reason why i know the famous arrangements is cuz i had the caption on and it said oh this is leonard bernstein's uh, song oh this is new york new york this oh this is that i don't know anything about this man and at the end i just knew that he was just a narcissistic genius that ignored his responsibilities to his wife but at the same time let me get oh let me get back to uh um felicia um let me get to felicia felicia try to be this dutiful wife leonard bernstein is some might consider a closeted gay man some might consider him bi but he he always needed her in his life not so much as a tether but more as somebody to keep all the other responsibilities together in life because i doubt that he was doing all the responsible things like t raising the kids and making sure the house is okay and everything. And she was, um, if I remember correctly, she was a notable actress in her own right. But she took on the motherly duties, and it was that they did that classic like uh, back in the day, like a, a good wife stays quiet and doesn't bother the man, her man, and whatever his vices are, his vices, and you have to sacrifice yourself for him. And maybe because I'm thinking in the, in the 2024 mentality, I was like, look, if you got a problem, you need to just say it. Um, she foolishly in the beginning of their romance said, oh, uh, um, when, when he was just talking about like, he basically was talking about like, he likes to sleep and run. He likes to party, he likes to have fun. And she was, she was just like, you know, be you, you know, do, you know, I understand who you are and do what you want. And it was fine. They would have these parties, these, these many, many parties that, uh, men would come and, and friends would come and. And the idea that these closet was hilarious. I mean, I mean, the way they was having these parties, everybody knew. They didn't, nobody. I guess it was. I guess it was the uh, Hollywood. Don't ask, don't tell. It had to be. And he would he would get with these young men, these young men that that were in awe of him. And she was fine with it. She was fine. And years go on, you could tell her she's getting angrier and angrier. And you know, he's doing an interview or not interview. He's talking to somebody and he's saying that he's thinking how the world's going crazy and he's sad and. He doesn't understand why Felicia is uh, Felicia is so down and out. And he doesn't, under, he, he you know, he, he, there's no reason to be, but he's been down. But music is his life, and he loves people. And the other guy was like, "Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with her." <sighs> and then they have a blow up, and and she stayed there a few more years, and then, then she finally leaves. And then she's trying to date somebody else, and then she finds out that man is also gay. I'm like, Felipe, I'm supposed to believe you can't. You ain't got no gaydar. You ain't got no gaydar. I know you working. I know you. I know you worked in the arts and everything, but you can't tell. You can't tell he like he like what he like. 
And then she she gonna tell another bird so she's bird team sister. I guess I have a type. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Cause because he was your type, y'all would have dated. He you would let him do whatever you wanted. Um. It's, I'm starting to run into this thing where I think I'm starting to think a lot of movies, a lot of movies I've seen recently aren't bad, they're but they're just missing an element to it. I, oh, this is what this is what the maestro, this is what the maestro was missing, and this is what annoyed me the most. I wanted to see the I want to see more of the creation of the the songs that he made the create or the reinterpretations of of the of the songs and of that that he would would do we didn't get that we didn't get the understanding of the angst of the man creating the work we saw a little bit of the angst of him doing whatever he want and hurt everybody else's feelings but he never really changed even when even when felicia got sick he he was with her. He was there for her, and then and then at the end he was still dr- getting doing doing drugs and all kind of stuff. This, hey, hey, he he was. I could believe the amount of amount of coke he was doing in this. I was sitting around like Montana Bernstein, <laughs> this dude, Tony Montana. He was just let's do another like, and he just slept with slept with undergrads and stuff or or grad students or whatever. At the end of the day. I did see, oh, this is interesting. I did, okay, at the end of the movie, they showed a clip of Leonard Bernstein. He was, you know, doing his thing at the maestro. And I had seen a quick clip. I cut it off because I wanted to finish watch. I cut it off because I wanted to rewatch the movie to see certain things. But I, I didn't want to I didn't want to go in this thing looking up all these interviews, all the stuff to get the mannerism and everything. I just wanted to watch it for what it was. And I've seen a little bit of stuff here and there. Yeah, he does have a mannerism of Bernstein. And I think the movie would have been served well if it would have been interwoven with actual interviews by Bernstein and actual performances by him, like they did at the end of the film. You would have been more connected to him uh, when it comes to uh, his love of music. I think that would have served the movie well. Um, it, it's fine. I mean, I don't. But yeah, I feel. I still feel like we didn't get to know the man well enough. And and uh, or and if you're not going to know the man well enough, let us know the work better, which we didn't get in this film as well. Well, I'm Cincinnati man. Have a nice day. Bye bye.